investment you'll ever make in your entire life average house here is 576 576 is what you pay now you need 12 percent for broker fees let's say you keep the house 10 years you need 10 percent in maintenance fees it's one percent a year maintenance fees it's about two percent in property taxes every year that's 20 percent two times 10 is 20 and it's probably seven percent to the bank so that's 70 percent total those up it's 112 percent the 576 thousand dollar home will have to be sold for 1.2 million dollars in 10 years okay so we're gonna get the white
crazy lifestyle where you fly around in private jets and have all kinds of crazy money. Well then, sure, maybe listen to this guy and don't buy a house. Instead, rent something crappy, <laughs> save your money, and go buy something and rent it to somebody else because that's what he recommends you do. And he doesn't recommend that you buy a house. He recommends you buy like apartment buildings, like something that has five or six or 20 or 50 or 100 apartments in it. That's what he does. He, he, all of his are like big, big units, like thousand, thousand units. I mean, per building, like he buys big stuff. Like I, he, he bought something recently that cost $32 million. So that's what he does. And that's why he needs renters. If we were all out here doing the right thing, which is buying a house, um, then, um, he would be struggling to get renters. I missed one part of that. Well, let's just get into this part of it. So, $289,000 is what I paid for my house in 2015. So now it's 2023. I'm just gonna put 750. I wouldn't sell it for 750. I would sell it for 800, but I wouldn't sell it for 750 right now. So you can do that math. Now, my house is over double. Now I did spend money on it because this was like a fixer upper when I bought it. So that's what I would recommend if you buy something. Buy something that you could steadily work on a little bit at a time. If as long as it's livable, you buy it, you move in, and like I recommend working on one room at a time. You paint one room, put flooring in it, make it the way you want it, put light fixtures in it like you want it, and then you move on to the next room. What that does is it keeps you from having a mess all the time. You can block off one area. The only time it's really, really inconvenient is when you're doing a bathroom that you use a lot, or you're doing a kitchen, or your main living room, because then you have to find somewhere else to hang out, and in the kitchen is really hard, because, you know, your cooking and things like that can be uh, messed up, and you have to, like, set up temporary stuff and not have a dishwasher maybe for a little bit and it can be really difficult uh, bathroom too if you don't have another one and you're doing a bathroom that can be really really challenging you may have to go shower at a friend's house one or two days until you can get things up and running so that's something to think about too but what he doesn't calculate in talks about owning a $576,000 home. So a rule of thumb for rent, and this is what investors do when they look to buy something, they expect 1% in return. So if, if I were to buy a $300,000 house here, I would expect it. It should rent for $3,000 per month that's the 1% rule. This is what all investors try to do. Whatever they spend, they want to get 1% of that per month in rent. So if he's talking about a 500 and he was talking about a $576,000 home. So let's round this one down. Let's just call it 5 grand. So if you are renting a $576,000 home, it's probably going to cost you about $5,000 a month in rent. And notice that he didn't mention that in this video. He doesn't ever mention the rent you save. <laughs> so 5,000 times 12 months. That's $60,000 a year in rent. So in 10 years, you pay 
dollars in rent and guess what you get nothing zero so even if you use this example which was lies and inflated he said you would need to sell the house for 1.2 million dollars actually said you paid $576,000 for the house. Look, <laughs> you paid $600,000 for air for nothing. You got nothing to show for it. Zero. And yes, you pay the bank some interest, but the goal is you buy it and get it paid off. So even in this example, he said after all his bullshit expenses, of it even if you've just even if you've still saved half that money it really upsets me to have to, to see these big time um, gurus give bad advice because people listen to them they trust him this guy does give some good advice like some good financial advice when they do things like this that are obviously he's saying what will help him he can't tell you the truth because he owns apartment buildings how hypocritical would it be for him to own apartment buildings and say you should buy a house but I have apartment buildings no if, you, if he talks everybody into buying a house no one will come rent from him you see on my other channel on my Derek Manus channel I, I talked about
next September, it's worth 325, right? And that's at the 6%, or that's at 8%, that's at the 8% estimate, a little bit over 8%. So. But th just round 324 is the number, so it's worth 324 in one year. So you can afford to do, spend some money on it because it's going up in value. And if you ask your parents what they paid for their house, or ask your grandparents what they paid for their house, you will see house prices. It's just like everything else. It's like food and everything. Everything gets more expensive. The way that our economy works is like everything goes up but so does our paychecks. It's just the way they've set this economy up to always be going up. Now we have moments where it goes down, but it goes up in this motion. It takes a dip as it, the trajectory is up, but it takes a bumpy road getting there. So we have little dips. You might go a month or two where you experience the values going down, but then they go up, go down, go up, go down, but they, go, they, they traject up. So that's um, that's something to keep in mind, and that's. But again, you know, used to minimum what people made twenty five cents an hour when houses cost ten thousand dollars, and a car was a thousand dollars, right? People made twenty five cents an hour during the depression and things like that. And now, then people made a dollar an hour, then people made five dollars an hour, then now minimum wage is like $15 an hour in a lot of places. So that's, and, and when houses, like a basic house, eventually, probably in 20 years here, a basic house is going to be a million dollars, but by that time, minimum wage will probably be like 50 bucks an hour, <laughs> right? So you see that the, it's always the same. If they would just leave prices the same and leave wages the same, we all live the same. It's just a game. The economy is just a, just a game. It's like, it's just set up, but it does a pretty good job. It produces lights, it produces electricity and clean water for us and warm and cool places to live and grocery stores full of food. So the system is stupid, <laughs> but it works. And as long as you like figure out the rules, you won't get, you won't get hurt. And so the key is just to know the rules of the game, know what to do. And the main key is to, you, you have to sometimes use debt to get what you want. So like right now, houses will, will never be cheaper than they are today. So using debt to buy the house now might not be a bad idea, but if you do, the key is to not just pay the minimum payment, you pay more. You know, every extra dollar you get, you pay more. You try everything you can to get out of debt. Same, same with your car and with credit cards. If you've done it and you have debt, the goal is to get out, to get them paid off. You know, when I was young, I got caught up in credit card debt and because my, I was so poor, but when I started making money, I got credit and I had great credit because no credit is good credit when you're young. And so I was able to get credit cards and cars with car payments. And, you know, I was getting nicer clothes than I ever had because I was charging them. I was, I bought a house and I was fixing it up with debt, that car payments. And, and then uh, I learned about debt as slavery to the banks and I changed my ways. I watched this documentary called Zeitgeist and it changed my life. I got mad at debt and I spent like the next 10 years getting out of debt and when I finally paid my last bill off, I paid my house off. I can't tell you I, and I swore I would never go back in debt ever again because it's the freedom that you have. But remember, I'm 51, so don't feel bad if you're 30 or 25 and you have debt. Trust me, I had debt when I was your age too. But again, it should give you hope that it's possible. And like, though I'm old, and older than you, I'm sure, I'm not like feeble old man old, you know? I'm still healthy, I still work out, I keep myself in good shape, you know? And I still have a good life. 
see uh, plenty of time and that's the key is when you as you get older you don't want to be working as much and now that I have everything paid for imagine all your paycheck is yours and you don't have to pay bills out of it can you imagine that if you get a paycheck on Friday and you don't owe any bills I mean I still have bills like a cell phone bill and like electricity bill um, little stuff like that but it's big and I have to pay property taxes twice a year but basic stuff to where when I get paid it's still mostly all my money I need just a little bit to pay my bills and so what happens then is that you're getting money because it's not going to bills <laughs> now you can save that money up and pile it up and it, and, and it just starts growing and growing and growing and yeah so I, I'm gonna make another video just on finances and give you some encouragement on what to do but primarily this one I wanted to focus on just the house so I'm trying I'm getting off topic a little bit but you can see the premise of this this man is a liar and you should buy